And we're back, and it is my pleasure once again to introduce Anil, who will be giving our second keynote of the morning. And uh, let's go. Thank you, Anil. All right. Thank you, Rich. Um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, how is the conference so far? Hope you're having fun at ApacheCon. Uh, as Rich mentioned, my name is Anil Inamdar, and I'm the VP and Global Head of Data Solutions for InstaCluster. I'm going to talk about open core versus open source. So um, 10 to 15 year, years ago, open source was considered a risk, but it has matured very well. And at this time, it is an integral part of every enterprise strategy. You might have heard the expression for, from Mark Andreessen, software is eating the world. Technology journalist Adrian Bridgewater modified it in a recent Forbes article, he said, if software is eating the world, then open source will chew it up. Open source is everywhere. Even proprietary vendors are contributing to open source. Apple, Cisco, IBM, Google are in top 10 contributors. In fact, Microsoft has around 4,500 employees contributing to open source projects. But we need to be careful about who controls the governance and direction of the project or the product. Is it, the, is it uh, a nonprofit community or a commercial entity? For example, Drupal's direction is guided by around 115,000 community contributors versus MongoDB, where they control 99% of the direction of their software. During a recent survey, 95% of users said that Open source is strategically important. Also, Gartner is emphasizing that open source is becoming the backbone for driving digital innovations. Now, the success of open source has also created business models that are open source only in name. But in reality, they are commercial licensing models. One such model is the open core business model that we're going to discuss. Open core is a business model to monetize free open source software. Here, the core of the software is open, but the vendors have added proprietary features for which they can charge money. A, cu a customer may fall into the vendor and the technology lock. So when you choose open source, be beware of these in intricacies. Um, again, a few words on um, open core model. As I said, said it um, uh, on the previous slide, it is built on top of OSS. The core is open with proprietary features added. Now, the open core vendors claim that it is enterprise grade, but most of the widely used OSS is enterprise grade. Apache Cassandra is used by Apple and Netflix, and they are running their mission critical applications on top of it. The open core vendors also have a conflict of interest when it comes to contributing to open source, whether to contribute to open source or focus on proprietary features. Also, open core vendors focus on software sales more than providing world-class software product. Now, we believe that open core is continuously marching towards proprietary model. They start with open source, obviously, but first, the support gap is exploited. Then the feature gap is exploited. And finally, the delivery model is changed to provide serverless or cloud-based solutions. And ultimately, it becomes another proprietary company. But the open source does not stay quiet. It constantly upgrades and fills the gaps. First, the feature gaps, and then the delivery model alternatives. This is something to think and ponder about. Open core is always marching towards proprietary model, while open source always catches up. Choose wisely. The open source software is now an integral part of every enterprise architecture. But it has also become more complex in terms of licensing, governance, community, and business model. There are many types of licensing, permissive, copyleft, and custom licensing. Ultimately, the governance of the project is decided by, by the one who owns the license. Now, this could be a nonprofit foundation, 
In this case, the foundation provides open governance and decision making. Uh, some examples are obviously Apache Foundation. On the other hand, the owner could also be a profit making corporation. In this case, they have unilateral decision making ability as to what changes to accept. For example, an example would be like Scylla or MongoDB. Um, thriving, vibrant communities behind a software is again a factor in choosing your software for the long run. Last but not the least is the business model. You need, to, you need to see whether it is pure open source like Apache Cassandra or open code like say Confluent Kafka or open source IP like Scylla or just a cloud provider like AWS, Azure or GCP. So choose wisely and do your risk assessment. All right, so some of the risks when using open core. Remember that their expertise is on the license features and less on OSS. The support team is incentivized to steer customers towards premium and therefore paid features. This, of course, directly leads to non-portability with both vendor and technology lock. Um, a special word of caution now. A special mention is warranted towards the popular cloud vendors like uh, uh, AWS and GCP and Azure. Now they focus mostly on operations and delivery of the product with minimal investment in the community. They try to reap the benefits of the open source with their ability to scale and their reliability. Elastic.co recently changed its licensing to compete with AWS's hosting solution. Their business drivers focus on adding users than providing great service. Now, what is delivered? Sometimes what is delivered is not an open source product, but something that looks or acts like the real thing, but a different product inside. Also, the cloud vendors just provide the OSS on their platform. They don't provide any support or bug fixes or professional consulting services. All right, so who are we? So, so we are InstaCluster. Um, it's a 100% open source as a service company, delivering reliability at scale. So what's our domain of expertise? The way we help our customers can be categorized pretty clearly into few areas. These are represented at the top of the pyramid. The first is the expertise gap. Loss of customers might have a vendor application that require them to use Kafka or Cassandra, for example, and they just lack the expertise to do that. It's pretty tactical, but we do a lot of work responding to those kinds of needs. Next is a scalability problem. Customers realize that some legacy applications or technologies isn't able to scale up at all or scale up in a way that's not that that's affordable. So they start looking at open source alternatives. We also see customers who are generally concerned with the overall resource commitment at the data layer, whether it's people, um, licensing fees, or infrastructure. A lot of organizations just feel they are not getting a measurable payoff for some huge expenses. The last one is kind of a combination of all the above. Some of our customers are looking to eliminate technical debt at the data layer and incrementally modernize to achieve more scale and eliminate licensing cost. These are highly strategic initiatives for these customers and the projects often span multiple years. Our involvement can either be ongoing or just to fill key gaps along the way. The takeaway is that we help customers with a wide range of open source data initiatives. At the lower left is something tactical like filling, filling in or a lack of for a lack of expertise uh, to support a single application. Whereas at the lower right, we would partner on a full data layer modernization. The point is that we have customers at every place along the spectrum. So how does InstaCluster deliver? To simplify things, for the technologies listed at the bottom of the slide, our core offerings are the three things listed along the top. The first is consulting, the next is support contracts, and then finally our managed platform. Our managed platform 
is an automated self-service platform where our customers can consume data services that we operate for them. We will do the backups, the security, alerts, upgrades, you name it. Customers can interact with the platform either through GUI console or with the RESTful API. There are a few things that differentiate how we deliver and what we deliver to our customers. The first is we have a full lifecycle capability. We don't just build and leave. We can assist with the design, build, implementation, training, support, and finally, manage platform if necessary. Next, we are 100% open source. No licensing, no vendor lock, no technology lock. After that, we are operators first. What this means is that although we may not be the people who wrote Kafka or wrote Cassandra, but we are the people with the most experience operating these technologies. Our managed platform has logged over 100 million node hours running these technologies, so our operators have seen it all. And those operators are the same people that provide support if you have a support contract. Next, we have tested the builds that we use and have chosen versions that are known to be high quality. And finally, for the technologies that we specialize in, we are active in the open source community. We will write and upstream patches and will also contribute tools that benefit the project <clears throat> projects we work with. And we leverage the tools that other community participants have created. So this is a brief um, platform overview. On the top, we have the open source technologies we support. And at the bottom, all the cloud and the on-prem platform uh, that we deploy on. In the middle are all the services we provide for each technology, provisioning, monitoring, scaling, um, security backups, uh, et, et cetera. <clears throat> So let's compare the two alternatives. Okay, sometimes a visual comparison is helpful when we are comparing open core software uh, to open source software. So on the left here, um, we have an organization's experience, um, uh, how an organization experiences look like if they use a lot of open core software. First, there are multiple vendors and multiple licenses for Cassandra, for Mongo, for Kafka, for Redis, for Elasticsearch. For each of these technologies, it can be difficult for customers to know when they are being locked in because it's often unclear which features are free and which requires licensing. This is a defining feature of the open core model. Alternatively, here's a visual of an organization's experience if they used pure open source and partnered with InstaCluster. There are no licensing fees. It's a single vendor. And instead of proprietary features that commit you to long-term licensing fees, you can leverage the open source ecosystem to fill any gaps that exist in the open source projects. Okay, so for the um, so finally for the part for the participants in this conference, we are offering two promotions: uh, two hour open source consulting advice and one week free access to InstaCluster platform where you can spin up three node clusters in three to five minutes, uh, whether it's Cassandra, Kafka, Elasticsearch, Redis. I just mentioned Apache Con to access the above um, uh, promotions. Um, and with that, uh, I, 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 I finish my presentation. Thank you so much for your participation. And uh, back to Rick. Thank you very much, Anil. Thank you. So uh, our next presentation, our final keynote for this morning, is uh, also a, a repeat visitor at this event, and that is Willem Jang. And unfortunately, he's not able to deliver his talk in person, but I do have it recorded. So if you'll give me just a moment to set that up, I will be right back. <laughs>